Hey, Steve Mignone here doing the junkyard crawl at Burnison Auto Wrecking in Burnison, Massachusetts with a 1964 Chevelle station wagon. Now, 64 is the very first year for the Chevelle. And you gotta remember, the Chevelle is a mid-sized Chevrolet. Before 1964, Chevy didn't have a mid-sized model. They had the Corvair, the Chevy 2, the full-size cars, and the Corvette. But in that mid-sized market, they had nothing. Well, Chevelle changed all that. And its very first year of manufacture, Chevelle's accounted for 14.5% of all Chevy sales. That's a major success for the first year. By contrast, the Chevy 2 and the Corvair only accounted for about 8.5% per car in 64. So out of the gate, Chevelle outsold Nova and Corvair almost two to one. But this is kind of weird. Now, we often think of the 300 name as being a Chrysler 300. Well, this is a Chevelle 300. Now, you gotta remember, the Chevelle was available as the base model, the 300, and then the Malibu, and then the Malibu Supersport. So this 300 here was between 1964 and 69, the base level of Chevelle manufacture. Um, these were also available as two-door wagons in 64 and 65 only. And if you ever found a two-door Chevelle station wagon, a 300 only, uh, that's a rare, rare bird. And of course, this is not one of them. Now, this car does no longer have a frame. It's sitting here, just body. And of course, that speaks to the fact that Chevrolet designed this, the Chevelle or the A body, as a body on frame structure. And in fact, this also was the, uh, the basic bones for the Pontiac Tempest, uh, the Buick Skylark, the old F85. Uh, so a versatile platform. Now, we see here, of course, the Chevelle nameplate on the front. Um, and again, this is a 300, but something that's not 300 is the cubic inches behind the front wheel opening, 230 right there. Now that is the six cylinder engine, of course, overhead valve, a pretty good little engine, arrived, I believe, in 1963 for the first time. But check it out, the standard engine in this would have been the 194 cubic inch version of that six cylinder engine. Somebody paid $43 extra for the big 230. Now, of course, you could also get a 283 or a 327 in a 64 Chevelle. No big blocks till 1965, and that would only be the Z16 Supersport, of which 201 were made. No big block wagons uh, at all in 1964 or five, didn't exist. Uh, but under the hood of this one, well, <clears throat> a lot of nothing. Um, again, the frame is gone, the engine is gone. Uh, again, this was a 230 cubic inch inline six car. Manual steering, you can see right here the remains thereof still uh, connected to the steering column, single pot, manual master cylinder, dual chamber or dual circuit brakes would arrive in 67, as would available discs, but uh, this would have had nine and a half inch drum brakes. The same size brakes uh, were used on Chevy six cylinder cars, V8 cars. Uh, the only exception, 1965, the Z16, big block Chevelle's got 11 inch drums off the Impala. But again, that was a one year deal. Now this one here, we can see on the trim tag, uh, we see uh, paint code, we have, I guess, a 900. Yeah, 900 paint code. That is tuxedo black. Very uncommon. 778. That's the trim code. So this was a red interior black Chevelle. And we also see here, uh, what does it say? Baltimore, I believe, the, the body plant on this thing. Built in Baltimore. So again, um, yeah, BA Baltimore. Baltimore built. They weren't all built in Detroit. Now, inside, we have something kind of cool right here. And uh, I bring props from time to time. And this is the 1964 Blue Book car prices. So if you were buying a new car in 1964, you'd want to have this to find out how much the dealer was charging for options. And we see here on page, uh, here's Corvair for 1964, wholesale and retail. And then of course, on the next page over, we have Chevelle. First year for Chevelle, right there. We see the 300 series on the left, followed by the Malibu 6, Malibu Supersport 6. Yes, you could get a six cylinder in your Malibu SS, El Camino, 300 V8 series. And on the right hand bottom part here, we see the transmission options. The four speed was available, but only in V8s, no six cylinders. Six cylinder cars could be had with the overdrive three speed, or in this case, the Powerglide automatic for 188 bucks. That's retail. Dealer paid 146. So there's about a $44 uh, markup for the dealer right there on the Powerglide. But here it is right here in place. The steering column still has the shifter in place. The quadrant on top of it has, uh, I think it's drive and low, and that's it. Two speeds on the Powerglide. And you know, the Powerglide's a good transmission. Drag racers like them, but again, drag racers that have engines that have high RPM capability love the Powerglide because by the time they're at the end of the quarter mile, they don't need a third gear shift. But in daily street driving, the Powerglide, well, 
they used a lot of fuel unnecessarily, and uh, they don't have the flexibility of a three-speed um, automatic transmission. But anyway, $188 well spent for someone who didn't want to work a clutch pedal. So this car is, again, probably well beyond any kind of hope for, uh, for restoring. It's so rusty. The frame is gone. Um, but again, the, uh, the Chevelle was a major player in the Chevy marketplace. 1964, 14.5% of all Chevrolets were Chevelles, the midsize. And again, a brand new market segment, midsize cars. By 1969, 21% of all Chevrolets sold were midsize Chevelles. So this is the first year of something that became a big part of Chevrolet's monetary pie. Now keep in mind that in 1964, there were a total of 371,000 Chevelles of all types and engines sold. Of them, only 7,358 were six-cylinder wagons like this. So it's a pretty rare piece. And again, a black six-cylinder 300 wagon with a red interior. This must have been a stunning car when it was new. But again, that was then. Around the back here, it's kind of cool. We can see the utility of the station wagon body. The glass is present. And let's check out and see if we can even roll down the rear window. Here's the winder. And it's kind of cool right here. Just pop this puppy right out here like that. And then start winding down and... Yeah, no, it's all stripped out inside, I guess, but this would lower the rear window. And again, this tailgate comes down. Uh, at this time, Ford came out with a, a tailgate that actually opened this way or down the magic tailgate. Chevy didn't have one on the Malibu in 64, but again, this is the, uh, the tailgate. You open this up, you slide your groceries inside. And keep in mind, again, there were two-door versions of the Chevelle wagon in 64 and 5. Very rare very desirable. Now this Chevelle is not going to be going anywhere, but keep in mind the Chrysler 300 wasn't the only 300 on the market. The Chevelle 300, 64 to 69, yep, they existed too. So if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the Steve Bags YouTube channel. There's lots more to come here at Burnison Auto Wrecking.